So we've already looked at the regular Galaxy Tab S8 and we looked at the really big Ultra version. So now we're taking a look at the one right in between those two, the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus. Current pricing on this is 899 bucks. So if you pay full price, yeah, this one's gonna be expensive. Actually, I probably wouldn't buy this if I was paying full price. Luckily, I was able to trade in a tablet on this one. I'm not sure if they're gonna still have their pre-order deals by the time I post this video, but really you could get this down to 299 bucks depending on what you're trading in. I don't know, for me, I feel like if you think the Ultra is a little bit too big, this plus version might be just the right size. You still get the 120 hertz Super AMOLED display that you're gonna get on the Ultra. It's a little bit smaller at 12.4 inches versus 14.6. You get the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. You only get eight gigabytes of RAM. Although I got that version on the Ultra, it seems to have plenty of power. You get 128 or 256 gigabytes of storage. So you're not gonna get that 512 gigabytes that you can get on the Ultra but still 256 is quite a bit of storage. You can also expand up to one terabyte using a micro SD card and then you get a slightly smaller battery 10,090 milliamp hour versus 11,200. You're also going to get Wi-Fi 6E 2.4 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz plus you can also get the 5G version as well. You're also gonna get three different color options. Instead of just graphite, you can also choose silver or pink gold. Resolution is 2800 by 1752. You're gonna get the same S Pen, same on display fingerprint reader as you get on the larger ultra version. Pretty much the same camera setup. The main difference is you don't get the extra 12 megapixel front facing camera, but this one is still the ultra wide lens. You're gonna get the same four AKG stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos. And then of course, since this is a little bit smaller, it's only gonna be 1.27 pounds versus 1.6. So as you can see, you're gonna get a lot of the features that you get on the Ultra version at a little bit smaller size, not to mention cheaper. And then depending on what kind of screen you like, I feel like the AMOLED display is gonna be better than the smaller 11 inch LCD display you get on the regular Tab S8. Specs on this one are gonna be identical to the smaller regular Tab S8, except you have a super AMOLED display and it's a little bit larger. Now, if you like tablets, phones, and other tech, consider hitting that subscribe button. I try to cover as much on the channel as possible, and I'll be posting more videos this year than ever before. As you can see, super thin box here. Unfortunately, they don't include the USB wall adapter, but you can either just use what you currently have or get the 45 watt fast charger, which is gonna charge this up super fast. So it looks like you get the same USB-C to USB-C charging cable as the regular and the ultra versions. And then your tool for a micro SD card or SIM card, depending on which version you get. And your quick start guide, terms and conditions. It looks like regardless of which color you get, you still get the same black S Pen. Okay, so I've got the silver color here, really nice matte aluminum, but now that I've seen the graphite color on the Ultra, I don't know, it's kind of tough on which one I like better. I guess the good thing is they both look good. Funny how this tablet feels so much smaller now that I've used the Ultra. On the right hand side, you've got your power and volume buttons. There towards the bottom is your micro SD card or SIM card tray. Then you get your two speakers on each side, charging port, then you got the pogo pins there on the bottom. Now when setting up, you get face recognition, fingerprints, pattern, pin, and password. Okay, so it looks pretty much just like the regular Tab S8. Let's just change up this wallpaper real quick. Nice thing is if you change the wallpaper, it's going to change all the accent colors to sort of go with that wallpaper. So that's kind of nice. Can't say I like that one. Okay, I'm not sure if I like that one that much either. I'm going to switch this to dark mode. It just looks a little bit better on camera. So, so it's using about 21% of the 128 gigabyte storage. I think that's pretty similar to the other two tablets I just looked at. If you swipe left of the home screen, you're gonna get the Google Discover or Google News Feed as I like to call it. Nice thing is if you wanna change that to Samsung Free, just hold down on the home screen, swipe over, and then you can choose Google Discover or Samsung Free. 
when you swipe up, you're gonna see most of your typical apps here from Samsung, Google, you got a few from Microsoft, and most of your other typical stuff here like phone, messages. They've also added a couple things like Spotify, Netflix. Up with the notification shade, you're gonna get most of your typical stuff as well like Wi-Fi, sound, Bluetooth, auto rotate, airplane mode, flashlight, power saving. You've also got location, screen recorder, quick share, You've got Samsung Dex, Smart View, Nearby Share, iComfort Shield. You've also got Do Not Disturb, Call and Text on other devices. You've also got Second Screen, which is actually a pretty cool feature if you haven't tried it. You basically just connect this to a Windows PC and it's really simple. I may have to include that in a video later. You've also got Dolby Atmos and scan QR code. And then very similar to other Galaxy tabs, you get some shortcuts over here on the side. You can customize that, or you can also add different apps over there. If you tap on the pencil, it's gonna give you some tips here for the S Pen. You can also write something in the search bar and it's gonna convert that to text. And then you've got air actions where you can control stuff like your camera app. There's really just a lot of different stuff you can do with the S Pen. And then you've got shortcuts like create note, view all notes, Smart Select, Screen Write, Live Messages, AR Doodle, Translate, Pin Up, or you can add just about any other app. Then all you have to do to charge it is just put it right there on the back. Okay, fingerprint scanner seems to work pretty good on here. This might be better than my Pixel 6 Pro, I don't know. You can go up to 2160p resolution when watching YouTube videos, full HD playback resolution while watching Netflix. I mean, if you think the plus version feels big, it actually feels pretty small next to the ultra. I mean, it may not look that much different sitting next to each other in this video. You do have a little bit smaller bezels there on the ultra versus the plus version. But when you're using these two, yeah, you're gonna notice a huge difference. Nice thing is I actually got the new keyboard book cover included when I bought the or if you already have the older keyboard cover from the Tab S7 Plus or S7 FE, that one works on here as well. So you can connect that in a mouse, use Samsung DeX and be a little more productive. Overall, just really nice feature to have. And really, this is one of the closest ways you can get to using a regular laptop on a tablet. Now the Geekbench scores are gonna be very similar to the regular Tab S8, mainly because I have the 128 gigabyte storage, eight gigabytes of RAM, so it's not really a surprise. And then gaming on this, it's gonna be very similar to the regular Tab S8. It's even beating out flagship phones like the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Very comparable to the Tab S7. Maybe slightly better when testing out PUBG Mobile and Asphalt 9. I didn't have any overheating issues or anything like that. Graphics look nice and smooth and the game seemed to load fairly quick as well. On games like PUBG Mobile you get HD graphics, high frame rates, but you can adjust those up to Ultra HD and extreme frame rates if you want to without any problems. Now the tablet will get a little bit warmer but overall all, definitely good performance on here. Here's a quick audio test just to give you an idea of what these speakers sound like. It's gonna be pretty much the same camera app that you get on the regular S8 and the Ultra. You've got portrait, photo, video, and then a more you've got pro, pro video, single take, night mode, food, panorama, hyperlapse, and portrait video. Now for video resolution, you're gonna get 4K 30 frames per second on the rear facing camera, and then 1080p 30 frames per second there on the front facing camera. Pretty quick shutter speed there. And you can see a lot of detail in photos here. So yeah, if you're wanting a tablet for Zoom meetings, this is probably gonna be one of the best ones you can get. Let me give you a few samples of photos and video just to give you an idea of what to expect on the new Galaxy Tab S8 Plus.
Now the camera quality on this tablet is actually really good, especially for a tablet. Portrait mode actually works really good with pets, or in this case, stuffed animals. I mean, they're still not quite as good as flagship cell phones, but still really good. The other thing I did notice is the autofocus on the front facing camera seemed a little bit slow to adjust. Maybe that'll be fixed in a future update. Not really that big a deal, but just something I noticed. So hopefully this gave you a little closer look at the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus to get all the features of the Tab S8 and most of the features of the more expensive Ultra version with the Super AMOLED display. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.